So Nvidia is up 240% over the last 12 months, whereas the rest of the market is up 32%. And year to date through about the first three months of the year, the market is up about 10%, but Nvidia is up about 83% in three months. Currently breaking all time highs, I think Nvidia right now is the third largest company in the world. It has a market capitalization of 2.2 trillion dollars so obviously it recently exploded and uh, in this video we're just going to analyze their financial statements and review their revenue and earnings results for the third quarter and fourth quarter of the year and then also we're going to talk about their business model and try to value the company using a discounted cash flow model so first things first, how does NVIDIA actually make money? Well, NVIDIA is a tech company that is primarily known for its GPUs for gaming and professional markets, as well as its systems chip units for mobile computing and automobile markets. NVIDIA's largest source of revenue comes from its gaming segment, where they design and sell GPUs for gaming and PCs. These products are favored by gamers because of their high performance in graphics rendering. Data center revenue has recently expanded into the artificial intelligence market where NVIDIA's GPUs are being used in data centers for machine learning, deep learning, and high performance computing. Tesla is actually one of NVIDIA's notable data center customers using their GPUs for complex computations and artificial intelligence workloads, making NVIDIA GPUs essential for cloud computing providers, enterprises, and research institutions. Lastly, NVIDIA also sells its, G its GPUs to other professional markets for use in 3D modeling, visual effects, film and television production, automotive design, self-driving cars, and also architectural design. So now that we've looked at some of the ways that NVIDIA makes money, let's talk a little bit about this news article right here that is titled, NVIDIA has a secret weapon to keep growing long into the future. Obviously, there's a lot of skepticism as to whether or not NVIDIA could continue to propel its stock price upward. And if it can't, then in the near future or long-term future, the stock price will definitely end up collapsing back to a more reasonable share price. So the only way for them to continue to experience this massive growth is for there to be some other way for NVIDIA to continue to grow their business outside of the GPU market. So as we can see right here, some key points include the fact that there is currently increasing competition in the GPU design center, and that might end up chipping away at NVIDIA's revenue. And then also one of the main secret weapons that NVIDIA could use for long-term growth is building a hardware as a service business model, which could be NVIDIA's future. Right here, they point out that even with tremendous growth in revenue and profit, NVIDIA holds another ace up its sleeve to continue dominating the AI and computing markets. At Friday's prices, NVIDIA's price to earnings ratio is around 80, more than double the valuation of the tech sector overall. So either NVIDIA is completely overvalued or investors are pricing and that NVIDIA has a lot more room to grow. That means if growth slows or profitability wanes, its stock price could get slashed. In fact, competition in the high-end GPU market could end up challenging NVIDIA's revenue growth. They point out a threat to NVIDIA's GPU dominance right here, where they say, while NVIDIA is known for high-performance graphics processing units, GPUs come in many types, but in the case of data center GPUs, NVIDIA currently controls about 98% of the market. Despite NVIDIA's marginally better performance across GPU offerings, its current pricing puts it at risk of AMD, undercutting it in the data center GPU realm as well, AMD being NVIDIA's largest competitor. Furthermore, as other GPU suppliers catch up in the market, the demand that NVIDIA currently takes advantage of to generously price its products will likely saturate. So basically, as there are more competitors entering the market, NVIDIA is going to have to lower their prices in order to remain relevant, which is obviously going to eat into their profit margins and might have a negative impact on their stock price. Right here, they point out the significance of the data center platform where they say demand for NVIDIA's data center GPUs resulted in $18.4 billion in revenue for the product line in 2023, representing a 409% increase from 2022. 
revenue stream will only continue to increase as demand for artificial intelligence data processing expands in 2024, which is obviously at the moment very good news because it means Nvidia might continue to grow in the short term just based off of the data center GPU market. One real future possibility for Nvidia may not be its hardware sales from data center GPUs, but rather its long-term service revenue. By switching to service-based business models, Nvidia could hedge against the eventual saturation or decrease in demand for the GPU market. They also touched on how a lot of companies or tech companies in the past, like Microsoft and Apple, also shifted their revenue away from being hardware sales to service-based business models as the market ended up being more saturated. And that was how they were able to maintain their competitive advantage, which could be what Nvidia ends up doing as well. Dubbing it a serverless AI factory, Nvidia intends to onboard customer side developers, giving them the capability to rapidly experiment with remote GPU resources instead of having to try to fit procured hardware to the current needs. In this model, NVIDIA handles all of the hardware costs resembling a hardware as a service business model and enables its customers to focus on software iteration. So essentially what they're saying here is the future for service-based business model for NVIDIA could entail NVIDIA expending all of the capital investment into building out the infrastructure and the resources that would normally cost other entrepreneurs and tech entrepreneurs and tech companies a lot of money to build themselves. Instead, NVIDIA will build that and then allow other tech entrepreneurs and smaller companies to use their hardware as basically a, a leasing agreement, which would allow NVIDIA to continue to make more money, probably on an installment basis in the future, similar to a subscription-based model. And then lastly, they point out, is a service-based NVIDIA a buy today? For investors, the days of gargantuan portfolio growth on the back of NVIDIA's stock are in the past. The 51,000% returns in investors have seen over the past 20 years are mathematically unfeasible for a company with a $2.4 trillion market cap. But that doesn't mean NVIDIA is no longer worth investing in. Should the company manage to keep growth rates high, it will continue to increase in value. Whether or not it can successfully bolster its growth with hardware and software services remains to be seen, but the current market growth in cloud computing does signal increasing revenue opportunities for NVIDIA in 2024. So it looks like at the current market cap, it's unlikely that NVIDIA will continue to grow at the same speed that it has most recently. But that being said, it doesn't mean that NVIDIA won't continue to grow from this point. It could just mean that NVIDIA won't be growing as fast as it was in the last year or two. So now we have these financial statements to try to get a better look at NVIDIA's earnings results for the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Right here, they point out that revenue increased from $5.9 billion to $18 billion year over year in the third quarter, which is an increase of 206%. And then their bottom line net income increased from $680 million to $9 billion. That's an increase of 1,259% year over year. So obviously, very impressive revenue and earnings growth for NVIDIA in the third quarter. For the full year results right here, we can see that revenue increased from 26 billion to about 61 billion. So that's up about 126%. And the net income increased from 4 billion to almost $30 billion, which is an increase of about 581%. Although it doesn't say it here, for the fourth quarter, revenue increased 265% to 22 billion, and the net income increased 769% to 12 billion. So quarter to quarter, year over year, NVIDIA has obviously been showing very impressive revenue and earnings growth. And that's a large reason for why their stock price has catapulted so high in the last year. So now I've prepared a DCF model to try to value NVIDIA from an intrinsic value perspective. I'm using a growth rate of 44% because I'm basically using the growth rate for their free cash flows for the last five years, and then I'm projecting that into the next five years. So we can see right here in 2019, they had free cash flow of about 4 billion, and in 2023, they had free cash flow of about 27 billion. So that's a historical growth rate compounded annually of 44%. Then I also calculated their weighted average cost of capital to calculate their discount rate for this DCF model. And it came out to about 10%. And I got that using this calculator right here, which you can pause the video and take a better look at if you'd like. 
They also have a net cash position of about 15 billion after subtracting debt and about 2.5 billion shares outstanding. Putting their estimated intrinsic value per share based on these metrics at $800 per share, which means that at the current share price, it looks like NVIDIA is currently overvalued. I would say that this is actually pretty bad news because this DCF model is assuming that they're gonna be able to grow at 44% per year for the next five years. And even with such an optimistic growth rate, Nvidia, NVIDIA's estimated intrinsic value is still below their current share price. So basically NVIDIA would have to grow at more than 44% per year for the next five years in order for this current share price to be justified or in order for this current share price to be undervalued relative to NVIDIA's real intrinsic value. So that's obviously a lot to ask for a company to grow at more than basically 50% per year for the next five to 10 years. If NVIDIA is able to do the things that the article touched on, like building out a hardware as a service business model, then it certainly is possible. But as competition increases in the data center GPU market, time will only tell if NVIDIA will be able to continue to grow at the same rate. Then right here, we can see a competitor industry analysis comparing NVIDIA to two of their main competitors, AMD and Broadcom. We can see across the board, it looks like NVIDIA has the best profit margins out of the three companies. 72% gross profit margin, almost 50% net profit margin, 55% return on assets, 91% return on equity. They also have a price to cash flow ratio of 83 times cash flow and a price to earnings ratio of 78 times earnings which looks pretty similar to the other companies that they're competing against in this GPU market. And then we can also see that they pay a dividend, although it's a very small dividend. Broadcom pays the highest with a 2.19% dividend yield. So based on this, if you're just judging them by dividend, you'd obviously want to give it to Broadcom. But if you're judging these companies by profit margins and return on equity, then definitely you want to give it to NVIDIA. Lastly, I wanted to compare NVIDIA to other companies we've looked at over the last few weeks on this channel, we can see right here that NVIDIA was not trading below intrinsic value per share, so they don't make it onto this table. You can see here the top 10 companies that we've looked at that were trading at a good price relative to their intrinsic value per share or even just below their intrinsic value per share. Then for the growth rate table, it looks like NVIDIA comes straight or shoot straight to the top of the table at 44 percent ahead of all the other companies we've looked at they don't make it onto the dividend yield table because they had a pretty small dividend yield if we look at gross profit and net profit nvidia shoots to fourth place at 72 percent gross profit pretty close to the top gross profit companies we've looked at and then they have the best net profit margin by far out of any company we've looked at so far at 48%. Second is their, one of their main competitors, Broadcom, at 34%. So definitely it looks like the GPU market is very profitable right now. Then we can see Q3 and Q4 year-over-year -year revenue and earnings growth tables. NVIDIA shoots to the top of Q3 year-over-year -year revenue and earnings growth here with 206% Q3 revenue growth and 1200% Q3 earnings growth. We can see AMD is another one of their biggest competitors, came in second place for Q3 earnings growth at 353%, but definitely nowhere near Nvidia's 1200%. We can also see that for Q4, they shoot to the top of the revenue growth list at 265%. No other company you've looked at even comes close. Second place was 28%. And then for Q4, they shoot into third place, another one of their competitors, AMD, beating them in Q4 with a 3,000% return, but NVIDIA came in pretty good as well at 769%. We were also able to see last analysis that in Q2, NVIDIA was at the top of the leaderboard with 100% Q2 revenue growth and 843% Q2 earnings growth. So Q2, they're at the top of the tables. Q3, they're at the top of the tables. Q4, they're at the top of the tables. I'm noticing a trend here. Obviously, NVIDIA is doing really well this year, and it shows in their stock price. They basically have provided the best return out of any large market cap company in the market. And we can see that very clearly from this last table here, stock performance over the last five years. It looks like NVIDIA has increased basically 2,000% over the last five years. 
completely dominating the market. Second place so far that we've seen on this channel was Tesla at 850%. But we can see nobody even comes close to half of Nvidia's return at over 2000% for the last five years. AMD is in fourth place here at 625%, and then Broadcom in seventh place at 262%. But yeah, by far, Nvidia is definitely dominating the market right now. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Nvidia. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.